one seems to be mad about that. What does Ice Spice have to do with Why anything? Why are you going to bring Ice Spice? To she's she's not, Ice Spice uh, was an Olympic runner. But she she's was not. set up in the blocks like this. But she, <laughs> he's twerking, by the way, everyone. I'm glad I just got YouTube back up because it, it, it crashed. For everyone to see that. Uh, <laughs> why, why is Ice Spice... In where's the Olympics this year? Rome? Where the hell is it this year? Uh, no, no, Paris. Paris. She's not gonna be there twerking at the in the starting block. Uh, no, she's not there. You don't. She's know. not an Olympic runner. She no, I know qualified. she didn't make the team. Well, have they had qualifiers yet? <laughs> yes, no. they're having. And she's she did never, not make it. She's never ran a. a, a she never run in her life. Yeah, a have race in her that? life. What have are you, you talking her? about? She ain't running in no races. Okay. No. Ish. She ain't Flojo. No. Uh, but they have multiple uniforms they can wear, so they just said, "Look, if you want the, if you want this one to put your choo choo, because putting your choo choo out is a thing now. Hmm. Don't act like not it's not. Olymp- I see it all the time. Not for Olympic runners, it isn't. Well, we're gonna find out who chooses that. If you choose it, <laughs> you're choosing a choo choo. Hoo ha. Either way, yeah, that's not what I call it. Span a Spanish politician had to resign as municipal councilor. Wait a minute. We, it's a bit from long ago. Isn't is that what that guy said to his wife, and that's what got him in trouble? Instead, he said a c word. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> was it choo choo? Is that what he said? I don't. That was a while ago, Del. Yeah, it's news. It's uh, what have you learned? What did you learn this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. a Spanish politician had to resign as municipal councilor over leaked photos and videos showing him eat eating poop and offering himself as a sex slave. Do you feel like oh, yeah, he should have guy. to resign? As a municipal okay. counselor, just because he eats poo. So typically, if you have your own sex life, or whatever, it's supposed to be your own. But if you eat, I'm sorry. Once you hear that, the decision making cannot be. You just can't have him in a position of authority. I don't know. Sounds a little he, judgmental. You feel like he's a bad decision no, I am maker. Judgmental. I think we all need to be judgy sometimes when it comes to people who are over us. Are you judgmental every time you go to the ballot box and vote? Yes, you are. Would he have won if they knew about the poop eating before he went to the? Balance? Probably right. not. Well, leave that man. Let what, that man eat his, poop on What are his, his policies? Own. Where is this at? Spain? Yeah, in Spain. I don't care. Jose Riviera eats his own poo. Or the poo of others. Is this who you want on our city council? <laughs> Eating. A poo eater? Is he tough on crime, though? Yeah, I don't know what he says. Tough on crime, but also easy on poo eating. Is that who you want representing you? Guess who wants... Guess who wants people pooing in the streets? I know who. Jose Riviera. So if he, you want a streets full of poo that he'll eat. A, no, this is terrible. This is, Why am I even going in this maybe, direction? Maybe the Why does he eat poo? Maybe the streets won't be so full maybe of poo. He's a you he's saw two it. girls, one cup? I did not. I you never saw any of it? Yes, I did. Hold on. Let me show and you And it was gross. You can, no. That's the NFL computer. You can't do that. You can't do I that. I can't do that. I, know what, I can't do it anyway. <laughs> Apple apparently says it's fixing its bug that prompts Palestinian flag emoji when you type in Jerusalem. <laughs> that's, that's a bug. That is, that is a bug. Is it a bug or did somebody put a hack in on it's, it? Uh, I think that's probably. A yeah. Hack. Hey, yeah. you know what I learned this weekend? We're not that far off from World War Three. Oh, we're not. We're yeah. getting closer. That we, w- that was uncomfortable. That was trending. Yeah. Except they. I hit, was like, oh, who's saying something silly see- now? I ran into. Uh oh. Apparently they hit, they sent 170 uh, b- missiles, and the U.S. and Israel intercepted every one except one. It killed one. All of that attack killed one little girl. That was it. Yeah, the drones weren't effective. Yeah, they the were, Iron Shield is what they call it. I think. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, whatever. It just seemed like it was. I don't know. It just seemed like it wasn't as secretive as it should have been, since everybody knew about it. It was. It was. Out there in the open for, hey, we're about to send 100. I don't know if you guys heard. We're about to send 170 missiles at you. What? How do you? Why do we know this? Do we have Operation Iron Shield here? I hope so. I hope we're that good here. We can't. Listen. I, I, we fight over women's basketball. We we're polarized over that. We have no board. chance against anything else. Is there any chance Does we could get Operation Shield on our borders? <laughs> Um, Ford, did you see Ford had to recall thousands of bro- Broncos on what day? No, they did Yes, not. they did. Did they really? On the day O.J. died. On O.J. Day? Yeah. O.J. The day O.J. died, Ford said, hey, we're going to need to recall a bunch of Broncos. Well, no, duh. Uh, we are done. 
Delvin and uh, his his buddy are next right here on ESPN. Damn, Sean, that's disrespectful. What? No, that what? man can't even remember your name. No, I I, I did. It's, it's a, but Delvin and Buddies. No, that's not his name. <laughs> no. <laughs> buddies isn't his name. <laughs> Doc Linville is his name. Doc Linville is the best. Doc Linville is going to get your hand. The Neo Grafting, I played, actually I played golf this weekend with a guy who does it as well. He does the Neo, and he said, oh, yeah. The, the neo grafting is a, a fabulous process and you know what we are we are at a time when we've got the best technology on just on everything and in, in life we've got the best technology and the neo grafting is the best way to go about this and doc linville is fantastic at it and he's he does it at a great he's got, got a price for you he's also got the prp which will stimulate your own growth instead of moving your hairs to your top you can stimulate your own growth growth as well. But you can do either or. Doc Linville will be the one that will tell you, hey, let's just start with the PRP or, yeah, we can absolutely help you with the neo grafting. Let's get that process going. It takes about five, six, seven months for that hair to start to grow in. So get it done now, and you will go through, and by the fall, by the football season, you're going to be looking great. You need Doc Linville on that here, on that hill. Let's go. You need it on the top of your head. That's where you need Doc Linville. 975hair.com. That's 975hair.com. Welcome into the show. After a weekend that saw the Astros restore some order, it didn't start that way. We'll get into the JP France stuff from Friday. That was that wasn't great. But the next two nights, got to feel pretty good about your Astros taking the Rangers apart. And you know, outside of Seth Martinez late in the ninth yesterday, two wins in dominating fashion. The Astros. Win two out of three from the Rangers. So now, if we're keeping track, because the most important trophy in all of sports, at least all of Texas, is the silver boot. The Astros now lead the race for the silver boot at four to three. So that that's great. That's good. Uh, the, the But 
more importantly, it felt like you saw your Astros. They won home games, which is great. I mean, that's different from what has been the start of this year and last year, but they won their home they won home games. They won a home series. So that that was good to see and the bats came alive and on, on Ronel Blanco actually gave up runs, which is something we're not used to, but he responded. The two runs didn't become a giant inning or a, or just a bad start overall, which we've seen from several Astros pitchers where they can't bounce back from giving up a cr- crooked number. Renel Blanco didn't have those problems, and and the Astros went two out of three. So it was nice. It was nice to see Dubon out there. He made a couple. He had a big hit, and it, even better that Adolis Garcia bonked his head and couldn't make the play, diving in right field. So it was a. All those things came together. And it was nice to watch to watch at least the last two games of the series. The painfulness of watching J.P. France go out there, um, not enjoyable. And he's part of the rotation that that you'll see as the Braves come to town. It'll be Aragetti, Hunter Brown, or as I call him, Cosplay Verlander, and uh, J.P. France. So that isn't that encouraging um, going forward. But, hey, at least you won these two. The last two, that feels like it's important considering who you're who you're going to see and who you're going to pitch. Yeah. Uh, the Astros themselves are, are going to be confident, rightfully so. They have a track record. But I don't know how anyone else is going to be confident going into that series. Uh, you hope Aragetti goes more than two scoreless, you know, because it was good for the first two innings, and then he got to the second, second time in the order, and smack, 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 um, and then Brown and France were just terrible. I don't know, man, Sean. Um, I feel good about Saturday and Sunday. And then I look, oh, these three. Yeah. What what defines success for these three uh, starting pitchers against the Atlanta Braves lineup? Do you think? Seeing the fourth inning? Do you think they can get a, one, one time through the an order? average of four innings between the three, giving up three earned runs or less? I'd sign up for I would sign up for that day. right now. <laughs> today yeah, i'd sign up for either part of that today yeah either either getting through four no matter how many innings it takes if they only give up three combined uh, or three an average of three runs you'll take it yes and if if they all make it or they on average make it through the fourth inning again no matter how bad it is i'll take it yeah i would i would agree if if i think the the line is am i still in the ball game Am I still in the ball game when these three leave? I'll take it. I don't care when you leave, when a spotter makes makes the move. If he grabs them and when the inning is over, I'm still in the ball game, I'm gonna take that. I think that's my line. I don't the numbers, whatever. That can that depends on how well they do. But keep me in the ball game and hopefully my offense, um, although although they they are gonna face a pitcher who who handles them pretty well. But that that's my line in the sand for them, and and we'll see and we'll see how how it goes. But so far, uh, the Astros at least have have responded uh, from from what was an awful Friday after, night <laughs> for JP France. Man, um, the best part of it was I was listening to the Rangers broadcast, and they were losing their minds about Angel Hernandez. I mean, they're up eight to one. There's not a lot to complain about at the time, but Hernandez rung up a guy. Uh, it was clearly three balls. He, J.P. France should have walked in another run to make it 9-1, to one, and uh, they were losing their minds at, in the middle of beating down the Astros. But didn't ha- d- say l- much like we tell the Astros, maybe you should have saved some of those runs, Rangers, for the next night and the night after that because uh, when it came down to the, to, the, to the rest of the weekend, the Astros had some form. Yeah, and, uh, ten run curse. Yeah, ten run. Curse. We know what it's. We know what that's like. You you score ten, you automatically think, that, okay, the Astros are going to lose. Welcome to hell, buddy. And they're not going to score any runs in the next game. We're born in it, molded yeah. by it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do the Bane thing. I was going to try, but I can't do it. Um, yeah, that's, Bane will tell you. You only. I forgot what he said to Batman, but yeah, the Astro fans know what it's like uh, to go and score ten. We understand what that means. Um, now the team hasn't responded too well after scoring 10 and that's what puts us in a torture chamber. Uh, but so the Rangers felt some of that and, um, the Astros come away. And the best thing about it is the standings. The AOS isn't good right now. So after taking two out of three, the Rangers are only eight and eight and they lead the division. So the Astros, despite 
being six and eleven, only two and a half back. Uh, and of course, everyone knows it's early, but it's nice to just look at the standings occasionally and go, "Oh, okay, we're still in it." It's not like we're playing. Not like the Yankees are in our division, or you might you wouldn't classify the race as over, but you'd already have a giant deficit. Like the, the AOS is the worst division in baseball when it comes to who leads the division. Now you have you have, and there's only one team that isn't under 500, so that's good news. Where they the rest of the AOS is struggling. So the Astros haven't fallen too far behind, but they do have the Braves coming in who are nine and five and Spencer Arrighetti on the mound. But that's later today. We can talk about Jose Altuve being the best player in the AL West or not the AL West, the American League overall. And it's remarkable. We, we talked about LeBron on, on the earlier show about what he's doing. He's like nearly averaging 26 points, eight and seven. And Jose Altuve ain't as old as LeBron, but after not having to deal with an injury from the World Baseball Classic, having his contract stuff figured out. He has been really, really good. And we're talking about the MVP good. The, and it's only 11, I mean, 17 games in, so the MVP talk is nonsense. But if we're talking about guys who should be considered already, put Oza L2V on the list. He has simply been remarkable. And this has been the way his whole career career has gone, but at, 33 years old, and it'll be 34 in May, um, not that far away, less than a month, actually. Uh, and what he did, a couple home runs to our realize, hitting high fastballs. Like, uh, was it Evaldi after Jose Altuve hit a home run? He, he just said, I can't even say the word. He just said, bleep, leave it. Because throwing high fastballs at Jose Altuve is a bad proposition. And he learned his lesson. I mean, some guys need to learn their lesson. And Evaldi should know by now. But he learned another lesson. Don't throw high fastballs to Jose Altuve. He will, he will crush baseballs you don't think he should touch. Throw it at his throw it around his eyes. It doesn't matter. And uh, he had two home runs yesterday in the Astros a five win. I did love Todd Callis basically just like cackling every time he'd be like, and he's giving Nathan Evaldi, he's giving up seven home runs to, to Jose Altuve. Like every, he mentioned it the first time, and then the second time he was like bewildered that it happened again. Yeah, stop. Throw well. Some guys you just don't throw to. You, you Evaldi, don't don't throw anything hittable yeah. to Jose Altuve. And I know you have a different definition of hittable than he does, and that's why yeah. you, you can't imagine him hitting this. He but anything, like, I threw it at his chin. What are you talking? It about? doesn't matter. This guy against you, don't throw anything near him. Walk him if you have to, just to avoid any confrontation because he owns you. And he and he certainly did yesterday. A couple home runs in the first and third inning, a leadoff home run, and then a another in the third inning as the Astros got out to a two nothing lead. And you know, Blanco gave up a couple, but it's whatever. I mean, we're okay. We're okay. Let me Javier. Excuse me, Blanco was the night before. Javier gave gave up a couple, but seven runs. Excuse me, seven innings, two runs. I'm gonna take that from Javier. He's not the dominant guy we want and that's maybe long gone it's 2012 2022 we're still referencing what he did in 2022 but if he's going to give us seven and only give up two runs i'll take it 89 pitches well, javier's got an era under 1.6 so you're going to take that from him so far uh we can we can quibble with missing missing batters and 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 maybe going longer in innings than he should because he doesn't finish a guy off phrasing but um but I'm going to take that from Javier, particularly when you compare it to the rest of the the rotation. And and we're going to get a whole – we're going to get a good taste of it starting against the Braves when it comes to the Aragetti, Brown, and France uh, triumvirate. Uh, the uh, Javier stuff is going to feel like an ace. He's, we're going to feel like Greg Maddox when we compare it to those three or prime Verlander. And speaking of that, Verlander pitched over 70 pitches. We'll get into his performance. Some people credit or blame it on the – on the defense for the Corpus for Corpus Christi, why why his outing didn't go the way it should have? Multiple unearned runs given up because of bad defense. So the Verlander numbers are uglier than they should. But the most important thing is he should be ready to go when uh, his rotation turn comes around again. So we're not that far away from Verlander coming back. The Fromber thing is a little bit further away. He's gonna play catch. The base, baseball need, needs to come up with a better word for that when it comes to pitchers it just sounds like like you're 14 and your dad's out with you in the front yard oh we're just gonna play some catch I know there's gonna it's more strenuous than that but they gotta come up with a better thing d- during rehab because it just leads to jokes oh Fromber's gonna play catch 
Yeah, it makes it, it in a weird way. It makes it seem like you're even farther off. Yeah, and you're because, it like it doesn't sound like a positive step. It sounds like it sounds like he's just learning to throw a baseball again. Yeah, that's it, what it sounds like. It's like if they if an NBA player was hurt and they're like, yeah, they're letting him dribble now. Yeah, <laughs> you're you gotta, just like, wait, what? There's gotta <laughs> be a better. They gotta find something else because he's gonna play catch. He's a professional baseball player, a pitcher. What do you mean he's just gonna play catch? Yes, I know. There's more to it than that, but stop it. We ne- so find something else. We never hear about that it, when quarterbacks get hurt, and they it's because they hurt their elbows and shoulders all they the do. time. You never hear like you know what Tua Tua made a well because normally he has a different injury, but Concussion like usually yeah. Yeah, we, Drew Brees he has started th- playing catch now after his <laughs> horrific injury. It's like nope, they just they really just kind of skip to is he ready to play. Yeah, it's or he's throwing the receivers. They, yeah, they will get to that. Something like that. In he's you know part, participating in practice. Something like that. Not, not we don't get the the very beginnings of him learning how to throw a football again <laughs> because of his bad elbow. Unlike baseball, which will need they need to update you on everything. I and, I saw a uh, Lance McCullers is throwing from a slope now. Just what a is, slope? What's that mean? I I guess it's supposed to simulate the mound. Is it more advanced than playing catch? The slope? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I it's gotta be right. We need okay, that's part of it. We need we need a team doctor. I need a pyramid of Yes, to come out with the like lineup of okay, so this leads to this, leads to this. Cause we just hear it kind of interspersed. And so I don't know if throwing like a couple pitches off the off flat ground. Or throwing pitches off the mound versus playing catch. Like, I don't know where all these stack up as far as where you are and how close you are to coming back. Yeah, I need a timeline. Like, he's going to throw, he's going to play catch for three days, and that means he's progressed to, like, we have stages of concussions where now well, now he's got to be away from practice and football activities completely. He can he can actually be in a non-contact jersey and, be, and run plays in practice. I need that type of level of intricacy in baseball because just hearing the term he plays catch means nothing to me other than he's allowed to throw a baseball. His arm works. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, so he, his UCL hasn't snapped, I guess, because he can, he can still throw a it's baseball. It's functional, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what we know about Fromber's arm is currently functional. When, when it becomes Major League Baseball pitcher functional, uh, that'll be to be determined. But Verlander is certainly closer. I'll get, get into some of the numbers from him yesterday. Uh, excuse me, in, over the weekend as he as he as he pitched for Corpus Christi and what's next for him as we hope to see him obviously not against the Braves, but maybe later in the week as uh, your ace comes back. And all of a sudden uh, you you bump one of the guys who, who are going to be pitching against the Braves out of the rotation it makes you feel a lot better. The non-competitive games where where it either be Brown or France are just killers. You, you go into the game. OK. Maybe one of these guys can pitch better. Maybe, maybe we have a chance, and then it's over before it begins, and it, it just it drains you for that that night. Thankfully, the Astros responded the next two nights as uh, they take two out of three from the Rangers. Julian, you want to talk about Tokyo Vice? He's all he always loves to talk about TV. I did watch the season the season two finale of Tokyo Vice. That's on Max. You can watch that if if you so choose. It's a, based on a true story, so if you're into that, um, that's a, that's a show for you. Tokyo Vice, kind of what it sounds like. Just Miami Vice, but in Tokyo. Crime, the, sh- the Yakuza, all those things. Set in the, I think in the mid to late 80s, maybe early 90s. Um, I don't remember the time frame, but it's right around there. We'll talk about that and much more. We'll get into the Rockets and what Boban did. He's not the only one this weekend, by the way, to get people free chicken. I talked about Altuve and his, his great start to the year. He also is a legend when it comes to getting people free food. We'll talk about that when we come back.
This is the Del Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Del Olalea. Welcome back to the show. And I mentioned that it felt like the Astros over the weekend because they were in the, in the game on Saturday. It was tied 2-2, and then Victor Caratini had a big pinch hit. Uh, just led to a big inning. They score seven in, in that seven to pull away and win it eventually 9-2. Unfortunately for Renel Blanco, after giving up the two runs in the first inning, uh, he could the Astros could not score enough to give him a chance at his third win on the year, but he pitched six innings, gave them two runs, and uh, struck out five, so another quality at, outing for him. The Astros won that one 9-2, and, and they won yesterday 8-5. to five. So I that was Astros-like because of the big inning, and hitting in the clutch, not so much that it came from a catcher. Uh, Caratini's been great. Yiner slowed down a little bit, but still hitting over 300. So uh, the Astros have a formidable duo when it comes to the bats when at, at that position. So uh, something something very unique, uh, of, of, co- of course, over the last couple of years when you consider that Maldonado has been your pretty much everyday catcher for the last couple of years. Julian wants to talk about Tokyo Vice. Another show I rec- I would recommend, and a- another show where you're going to have to read subtitles. <laughs> Sorry, Sean, as he gives the thumbs down. What's up, Julian? What it is, Jive uh, Turkey. Hope y'all had a good weekend. Uh, I have been talking to a few buddies about some shows. Me and my fiance, we watch a lot of shows when I'm on the road. That's our way of having quality time or whatnot. And, uh, man, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I wish I would have kept this one to myself so I could just binge it. She's busy. You know, she, she has her thing with work and then the kids. So she can't really watch it when at the pace I want. And we're on episode six. Uh, actually, on episode seven. And, man, I just want to just binge through it. It's so good. I, I did not expect it to be this good. Um, I... I, I uh, uh, I'm hoping there's a season three, but I'm not sure that there is it's going to be one, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do it, because as I said, last segment is based off an actual person's life, the reporter's life. So and if you don't know, it's based off a a kid from the Midwest who goes to Japan and becomes a reporter for the first non-Japanese reporter for uh, one, one of the big papers there. Uh, his name is Jake Edelstein. Uh, uh, he, that's the real guy's name. So I'm not sure. If his life would lead to another season, I'm sh- but he's, he was there for quite a while, so I'm, I'm sure it could. Um, the question will be, I won't oh, get. It's, it's in the mid nineties, by the way. Okay, mid nineties. I was off on the time frame. Mid nineties of on that. So there's a shot of it. Now there are some things that c- come up in the season finale. I'm not going to reveal since you haven't seen it. Um, that could put. Appreciate it. That could, who knows, make make it seem like a season three is inevitable or not. I don't know. It just depends on how you read into the situation. So I'm in on show, show I'm in on Shogun Tokyo Vice, a couple of shows that Julian talks about, and he is one who suffers from something I don't have to. The watching it at the pace of the significant other. <laughs> I just watched the show, man. So Sato, the, the freedom is Sato great. is uh his Sato's character development I think is gonna be dope. Obviously, like I said, I'm, I'm midway through the season or whatever. But I see they, uh, before, before his Akini or whatever they call it uh, jumps off the building, he says, uh, you weren't born for this little brother. But I just saw him defend the old man and, and you know, help him not get killed. I think that's going to be like his stepping stone to be the, the BMF of, of the show. Am I wrong? I won't tell you. You have to. Watch. Ah, you haven't seen it. Why would I? Why, have a good day, man. No problem. I mean, I'm not a spoiler guy. I mean, you can watch it and, and determine. It. And and the other thing is, it's a, we're, we're narrow casting here. I don't know how many people have seen Tokyo Vice. It's on HBO Max. It's a good show. It's been on for the second season, but uh, I don't know how many people have actually seen that show. I would say go watch it. It's really good. But once again, subtitles are a thing, and and once it's another show in Japanese. So that that is something you'd have to get over if you don't like subtitles or foreign language shows. But it's there for you if you if you want to watch it. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, I don't think I can. I don't think I can pull d- double duty in uh, in uh, Japan with the shows I need to read the subtitles for. I don't know. I don't know if I can do. A, I don't know if I can cross the streams. 
I might, <laughs> okay. I might, I might finish up Shogun. What? Two more episodes, and then uh, might, might, might take a little vacation for myself. Uh, you take a vacation from TV? Yeah, just watching. You know, good so- old, good old American TV. Thank you very much, Dell. <laughs> this is America. Yeah. You mean Ooh. what about what about English shows that that are actually in English? What about UK shows that are actually in English? You, but you you need to have watch an American show. Yeah, kind of. You, 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 I mean, the English, the, some of them, you know, it's a little too English. <laughs> okay, sure, I get that. You know what I'm saying. I under- I, you, everyone I under- knows what I'm saying. When I, I understand say that. some of that, particularly the the period piece stuff. That's very English, yeah. understood. Yeah, no, I just I'm just gonna go, you know, go back, go back to my roots, you know, watch watch something accessible to me. Like what? What's what's what are your roots? Hmm. What are my roots? Uh, I'll I'll throw on uh, Friday Night Lights. Every oh, once okay. In a while. You're just watching an episode, huh? Yeah. What no, about, I mean, you can't get more local than that. Well, well it, me, yeah. Really. <laughs> oh, you're very true. No Law and Order SVU. No. 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 That too much of a bummer. Yeah, it's I, true. I guess Friday Night Lights. Like, I don't know. Landry kills the guy, but that's, he, was, that's, he was defending Tyra though. <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah. He gets a, off because of corrupt, uh, corrupt uh, police department. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Landry killing the guy the one time as opposed to every episode of SVU. <laughs> yeah, Some well, horrific thing first, happens. The first five minutes <laughs> yeah, of every Something Law horrific has happened, and now they have to solve the crime. Yes, so, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I just need to uh, do some do some load management for House of the Dragon in June. Okay. Also, the NBA, uh, really what it is, the NBA playoffs are going to be on every yeah, night. Man. And so They're right around the corner. I'm not going to have a, you know, a time to... Uh, block out however many hours it takes to watch two seasons of Tokyo Vice. So. Yeah, it's, they're out about forty-five to fifty-minute episodes. So yeah, it'll be it'll take you a little bit. Uh, no. Yeah. So understood. Now I, I understand, and, and obviously your version of subtitles is not going to help the cause either. But for others who don't have that issue, or maybe don't care that much about the NBA playoffs, or well, no Japanese, or 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 frankly just understand Japanese, <laughs> where you don't have, where I've subtitles don't matter. Shogun. <laughs> I've been like, man, it would be so much better if I just learned Japanese. <laughs> What if, what if what if an FX Hulu show drove you to learn Japanese? <laughs> I saw, Talk about an impact. I saw someone who said that they they uh, it was like just a tweet the, where they said that they uh, they had the subtitles off because they they wanted to learn Japanese like uh, like the Andrian did. How do you? <laughs> and and then not... it was like it was like by episode seven he was like, wow, <laughs> the Andrian's learned way more Japanese. Yeah. Than I have. How much Japanese could he possibly have learned when he doesn't have the English comparison to find out what the words mean? Yeah, at least at least John Blackstone has Mariko. He has a to, translator to bounce it off. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah and, he, and obviously you, that I don't know how long it spanned as far as from the time he got there o- over the course of to now episode eight. But I'm I'm sure your buddy doesn't ha- isn't living. He's living in an hour at a time. John Blacks he John is living every day, every hour of every day. That's a poor comparison. He should learn more than you. Um, but we digress. Uh, Shogun, Tokyo Vice, two good shows. Just happened to be in Japanese. We'll get to the Rockets when we come back, mostly because of Boban. Boban did something very funny. The Rockets won. They're now 41 and 41. On the, that's how they end their year. They finish at 500. You know, the guys are talking about what they've learned and how, they're, how they didn't reach their goal, particularly Fred Van Vliet. But the best part about yesterday was Boban being a real man of the people. We'll play the sound from that. I'll also tell you why Jose Altuve is that as well, because he did something because of a home run that gets you free food too we'll talk about that when we come back and also we'll get to a young wide receiver getting a lot of money which might set the market for one nico collins we'll talk about that and more when we come back
You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Fans are getting excited here. There might potentially be some free chicken on the board if he misses the second free throw. Oh, man, free chicken on the board. Yeah, so that's why the fans are getting a little, little frothy. Oh, they're pointing to anything. And- Chicken? Here's your job. Oh, he gave him chicken. He's a man of the people. He's a man of the people. He did that on purpose. He did. He gave out free chicken. That was Boban yesterday. He's in the game. Somewhat competitive. The Rockets were only up eight. And he, he didn't miss the first one on purpose. Apparently the promotion for the Clippers home games are if if a opponent misses two free throws in a row. You get chicken from Chick Fil A, I believe, is the the restaurant in question. And Boban missed the first one. And Boban is an ex Clipper. He spent time there, so um, maybe he knew about the promotion beforehand, or maybe he just sensed or saw something on a scoreboard that said we're one free throw away from free chicken. But he played into it. He start and he did like a Steph Curry back away as the shot was going up from the free throw line. People are saying, oh, he knew that he knew he was missing it, so he's backing away like Steph did. Now, the question is, is it more because it's game 82 or because it's Boban why no one cares that an NBA player missed missed a free throw on purpose? We understand it doesn't matter. The Clippers aren't playing anyone. The Rockets played Jalen Green for a little bit. I don't know. Maybe they thought if, he's, if he got hot, he might be able to reach 20 points per game. I think he had to score like 41 I, uh, to I, do that. But I think it was because he wanted to play all 82. I think that's oh, Jay, the, oh, that too. Oh, yeah. more so than the uh, the points per game. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Chet Holmgren did that, and he's a guy who people question, particularly when he when he got hurt before the preseason began, um, about his his status last preseason. That's why he's a rookie this year. He got hurt like in a, like in a uh, Utah summer league game, and he was seen like see never. League. Wasn't it? Was it? I thought he played in a. It, it was against LeBron, and LeBron okay, maybe, doesn't play something. Yeah, league. maybe it was. I guess it's Drew League game. You got, you're probably right about that. He got hurt in the Drew League game, and then and then uh, we never saw Chet Holmgren last year. And then he played. He tweets out about playing 82. Jalen played 82. So for some guys, it still matters, and it matters to those two. So um, so credit to them for playing all 82 because we saw a couple of Rockets mainstays not play in the game, like Fred Van Fleet uh, and Dylan Brooks. So what do we think, Sean? It's because of it's Boban or it's game 82. Why we don't care. No one cares that he missed. A free, maybe I think ESPN brought up the topic. I didn't listen. So maybe they were go, going after him. I doubt it. Where, you you where, think first take was like it was on first take. I'm not sure or no, or get up. I'm not sure which one it was. Who in the West is under more title pressure? Well, right they, now. that's that's the old a classic. They always do that. <laughs> But it was on one of the shows in the morning. Mm-hmm. They were talking about it. But this is because it's Boban, right? That no one's, no one cares that he missed a free throw on purpose. So I think it's two things. I think it's, I think it because game eighty two nonsense. Like yeah, uh, there's so much the, nonsense. The Clippers that are playing players we've never heard of. Uh, yeah. Yes, I, I pulled up their. Uh, Zay- someone named Xavier Moon played forty six minutes for the Clippers yeah. last night. <laughs> Ty Lue was or like, last afternoon. you want you want minutes, you'll get all of them yeah. in this one. So I think that's one is that I mean, the fact Boban's in a semi or a pretty competitive game. Yeah, they're only up by eight at the time. In the last five minutes, like that is game eighty two nonsense. It is. I think the I think it met its perfect match of the player that will play into game eighty two nonsense. Then Boban, Boban, Boban's the perfect player to be like. Oh yeah, they they want free chicken. I'll give them free chicken. I don't care. I don't, no, one, no one's gonna look at my free throw percentage and be like, "Oh, that's why we can't sign Boban." And really, who gets <laughs> upset with Boban? Yeah. So yes. he's like, so even even Ime Adoka is not yelling at Boban because of this. I I would think it is very interesting to think about Boban on this team because Boban's whole vibe seems very different than Ime's vibe. I can't imagine Ime like just, you know. Yucking it up with yeah. Boban. He doesn't seem like the type. I don't, he doesn't like, seem like he smiles a lot. Like com- particularly, this is why I brought it up mostly because Boban doing this for an Ime Odoka team. Cam Whitmore will not do this. No. Ben Thompson would do it on accident, maybe. <laughs> uh, Jabari Smith Jr. also may- maybe do it on accident. But if there was any other player but Boban who did this, would Ime take issue? Like I, I can't imagine him getting into it, having a discussion with 
with Bo Williams. That's not the way we play. I don't imagine that discussion happening. Jeff Green could probably he get could away probably with get away with it. But it, again, it's probably not on like Sports Center, or mm-hmm. you know, it's not a trending. I don't think that happened. I don't think anyone plays it up like Boban does because Boban that's made it of, obvious. He made it obvious what he was doing. <laughs> he even like looked around beforehand. And was pointing. Yeah, like, he, he. Yeah, you want it? You're well, welcome. Let's you're go. Welcome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is. Um, when when they're up big, he's the human victory cigar. It's okay. Time to pull everyone and put Boban in because we're having a good night tonight. Uh, he, he missed two one free throw on purpose. He. He missed the first one just because he missed the first one. And it didn't affect the Rockets. They went on to win. And really, if they had lost, the only thing it, it would have affected was, oh, they didn't finish 500. It would just been embarrassing. Uh, yes, A, 500. If they lost B, by one point. It would have been embarrassing. Yes. <laughs> just like, come on. Yes. If they had lost that game and they lost it close, that, and Boban's free throw was the difference. And that's where Ime Yudoka in the post-game press conference, again, for game 82, is like, I'm disappointed by how some of our guys didn't take this game seriously. <laughs> if you want to play, if you don't want to play, just tell me. Like, we'll play. Some, we'll find someone else to play. In this case, you couldn't find anyone else to play. Yeah, it was I mean, all you had left. They found literally everyone on their team that they, that they could find to play. Yes. So Nate th- Williams played 21 minutes. Well, see. <laughs> just, he found some guys who wanted to play. Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Fleet weren't interested, and rightfully so. The season was over. <laughs> yeah, rightfully so. And then, but they got the 500, which 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 is good. The Rockets don't finish with a losing record, something they haven't had haven't been able to say for a little bit. So that, so that's nice. But Boban's not the only guy who won people chicken. He won he won the Clippers crowd or crowd chicken. Jose Altuve won the Houston Astros fans chicken. He hit his home run, hit the foul pole, the foul F O W L pole. Nice. Um, there, yeah, that's just what it's called. Yeah. And because of that, if you download or open your Chick-fil-A app today, you can claim your free chicken. Now, my question is, do I, is it just a regular basic ass chicken or do I have an option to get the spicy chicken? What, what do we, is it just a chicken, sa- a, a basic chicken sandwich, some chicken nuggets? What, what do we get? Any type of free chicken? As I look at my app, I should. No, you can, you can choose whichever you can get the, you know, or, original you can get the spicy. You can get grilled. Oh, okay. You can so, get eight count, so eight count grilled. Shout out three, to Chick Fil A for giving me options. Strips too. Wow. Okay, so if you weren't aware, Jose Altuve hit the foul pole yesterday. Now you have the option of getting yourselves some free chicken. Valid through the nineteenth. Oh, so you don't have to do it today. You can get it by Friday, and um, so get yourself oh. some chicken. Oh. That's cool. Thank you, Jose Altuve, and thank you, Chick-fil-A. Nathan Avald. Thank you, Nathan Avaldi. And if we're in Los Angeles, thank you, Boban. Boban. Yeah, a couple places. Get Houston Houston athletes getting people chicken. Appreciate you. And uh, and really Chick-fil-A for giving me the option of choosing something beyond uh, your original your yeah. original spices. I, I thought it normally was just That's the what I thought. Normally normal. when they do free stuff, it's their basic model, if you want to put it in car terms. But um, but not this time. No. Don't want to shake. <laughs> free shakes. Well, they had to do the first shake. I don't know. Get out of the uh, Hunter Brown gets out of the oh, first inning. See, for, that, that's for a free that's, dis- that's disrespectful. What? It's not wrong. It's just disrespectful. Spencer Arigetti. Uh, he got out of the first. He got out of the first two <laughs> innings. The third, not so much. The second time around in the order, not great. If a if but, a Houston if a Houston starting pitcher gives up less than a touchdown, if a Houston starting <laughs> pitcher who schedules a pitch in this Brave series gets out of the fourth inning with with giving up less than four runs, everyone gets a shake. In the city of Houston. We're not asking for much, uh, but Chick-fil-A putting some parameters. They're never going to give out free shakes because they can't guarantee the thing will work. It's a shake machine. Mm. You never know. It's, uh, it, feels like, it feels like that's the most breakable item in all of fast food. The shake machine. Yeah. I think, I think it, hmm, why is that? I can't tell you. Why is that one the thing that breaks? Because like, they never go like, oh, we don't have fries the McDon- you, you can't go to McDonald's, oh, our, fr- our fryer's broken. They never say that. <laughs> yeah. It's all oh, our shake machines out of order. Yeah. Why? How could that be? How could it be? Forty five percent of the time I come here, your your ice cream slash shake machine doesn't work. There's that's Maybe they too just high. Never fix it. That's too high. They yeah. Uh, the thing is, I don't go to McDonald's that much. I might go. I might. I may go to McDonald's for specifically for fries and a caramel sundae once every f- six months. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> <You're> it's broken <laughs> when I go. 
the fries are good, fine, but the shake <laughs> or the ice cream machine, Fri- broken. Fri- fries, they still have it. They'll always be had the fries. McDonald's, McDonald's is like LeBron when it comes to making fries. It's it is just <laughs> even at four, even at thirty nine, going on 40, 25, 8, and seven in a big game when it really matters. When you need to beat the Pelicans, they will show up in a to, to get. I guess to, to clinch get, the plan, get spot. the eight seed in the playing spot. The fries will show up. The shake machine or the ice cream machine—that's more like James Harden in an elimination game. Three, three for eleven. Three for eleven with eight turnovers. Oh. Or hey. I didn't shoot the ball because the ball didn't come to me. They'll have that. That's their excuse. Hey, hey, the, the McFlurry machine just didn't come to me. I <laughs> yeah. don't know. We pulled the lever. Nothing came out. What yeah. can we do? What can we do about that? I don't I don't understand it, but much like I don't understand James' disappearances in playoff games, the shake machine, same way. I mentioned that a young receiver got paid. We'll talk about that and what it might mean for at least one of our young receivers. Tank, you got to gotta, you gotta wait a bit. But Nico... He's, he may be up for well, – he is up for a potential big deal. And this deal just announced might affect Nico and the Texans' pocketbook. We'll talk about that when we come back.
Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Dell Olalea Show. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Dell Olalea. Welcome back to the show. I mentioned before we went to break that, that there was big news as far as a young wide receiver get, getting a big deal. That receiver is Devontae Smith. He is the... He was the third wide receiver drafted in the 2021 draft behind Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddle. He gets his money from the Eagles. He gets a three-year, $75 million extension with $51 million guaranteed. So big bucks for Devontae Smith, a guy people questioned. Was he big enough? Uh, Will he be able to hold up to the rigors of the NFL? And the answer is yes. He's been just fine. The former Heisman Trophy winner cashes in. Howie Roseman gets gets a deal done before got the Dolphins get one done with Jalen Waddle. So probably a smart decision because we all know the person who comes next is the one who gets more. So he gets a deal done before the Bengals can get a deal done with T. Higgins. He's on the franchise tag. So there are so there are questions about who's next and how much money they will get. And that leads me to Nico Collins. Nico Collins wasn't or, or doesn't have the draft status that the, those guys that I've mentioned had, but he had a really good year first year with a big time quarterback. And he showed up, uh, Texas were Texans were serious about winning and Nico Collins had a big year coincidence. Probably not. So 80 catches almost 1300 yards and eight touchdowns is Nico Collins. After what you would hope is two years of productivity, going to get something that matches what Devontae Smith has gotten? Probably. The question will be, how much more will he get? And will he be the fourth in line after Devontae Smith gets his? Because there's talk of Jalen Waddle getting an extension. Uh, we know that, We know that, as I mentioned, T. Higgins is going to look for a deal. And he, does, he expects to play for the Bengals this year, but doesn't really expect to get a big deal from them now that he's playing under the franchise tag, of course, that could change at any moment if they come to uh, an agreement. And Jamar Chase is another one. When is when is Jamar Chase going to get his money, and how does that affect Nico Collins? So if I pose this question to you, Sean, let's say, let's say it's this deal plus $2 million more guaranteed because he got his deal after Devontae Smith. He gets, it, he gets his annual average of $25 million a year, and you're extending Nico Collins. Does that make you go, oh, no, what are we doing? Or you're like, you know what? That's the market value for a good receiver. Now the question is, do you think Nico Collins is as good as the Waddles, the Devontae Smiths, and the Jamar Chase? That's the question. Because if you do, how can you fight the money when those guys are likely going to get that or more? But what if you don't? I think this is the last like this offseason is the last time that you can get a deal less than this for Devontae or for uh, Nico Collins, less than Devontae Smith contract for Nico Collins. I think because he's only dealing with one year of number one type uh, receiver production in his career, that this is the last time that you can be like, oh, well, you know, we don't know. Uh, are, are you as good as Waddle or Smith or any of these other guys? You know, uh, don't really have the track record. And you can drive the price down uh, like that. And it's like, well, you're, you know. Uh, but once he puts the second year on tape, and if we expect him to maybe not have the same exact counting numbers as he did uh, last year because they are adding Stephon Diggs into this uh, offense, but if he has another year of, you know, high, high quality, maybe top of the line number two, or maybe he might still be the number one receiver for the Texans for this coming year. Then you're asking about way high. You're you're going not way higher, I guess, but you're going like twenty seven, twenty eight million dollars a year, as opposed to right now where it is a question of does he get more than twenty five a year? That that's the uh, that's where the Texans are at right now. With do they get the deal done right now versus next year? I I would agree. Doing it now is probably because you might get less than this. He yes, might, he might. He might, and he might say no. Now, now that I see a deal is in place, I'll, I'll wait. 
that yeah. what that's always been the the back and forth whether giving him a deal after just one year production is a smart idea. But now that the market is set for a receiver in his age range, he's probably not going to agree to a deal that's less. He's just going to say, "I'll play this out, and then when I'm great again." You're going to have to pay me more because I'm next in line. Yeah. Uh, now, Devontae Smith isn't even looked at as the best receiver of that draft class, and then Jam- and Jamar Chase still hasn't gotten his. We expect Jamar Chase to get his. Probably one of the reasons T. Higgins isn't getting a long-term deal or an extension from the Bengals because they still have to play Jamar Chase. So if Jamar Chase gets a deal, he is certainly of a higher caliber, at least the belief is, uh, than Nico Collins. Yeah. So we're going to ha- – so the Texans and Nico Collins are going to have to have this – this contract negotiation where they tell him, okay, you're good, but you're not as good as him, so we can't give you that much money. Yeah, I, and, I and, of course, he's going to push back and go, I've been as good as him the last couple of years if he reaches that level, of course. Oh, yeah, if, if he does it again. Yes. Been for two years. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that a Jamar Chase or a uh, – I mean, Jordan Jefferson still hasn't gotten his deal. CeeDee Lamb still hasn't gotten his deal. I don't think those guys really affect – really affect the Nico Collins price that much even even if they sign him next year honestly Nico, I, I don't I don't think Nico Collins would tell you play himself into that conversation and Nico Collins would tell you I had a better year than Jamar Chase did last year and he did what about the year before what uh, about for the rest of your career well obviously Jamar <laughs> Chase has a long a long track record but even last year you would compare Nico Collins to Jamar Chase's numbers Nico Collins numbers are very comparable to Nico to Jamar Chase's numbers. Jamar Chase in twenty. Jamar Chase had to play with Jake Browning for half the year. Well, That's last year. Say. Well, in twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty two, um, which obviously Nico wasn't nearly as productive. Jamar Chase just over a thousand yards, nine touchdowns, twelve yards per catch. That's not overly uh that's not like shocking, mind blowing numbers. Nico Collins played had a better year than he did in twenty twenty two. And you could say the same about twenty twenty three. Now what you're saying is true. Jake Browning took a lot of snaps. Uh Nico would say yeah, I, I, but I played with Case and Davis for a little bit for a couple games, uh, but not to the same, not to the extent of what Jamar Chase had to deal with. So sure, well, I am under the impression I believe that Jamar Chase is the better receiver, but the numbers when Nico Collins had a quarterback comparable to what Jamar Chase has had his whole career say that they're pretty much the same. If you just go by numbers, there are other factors that come into play. Offenses are different. The the Jamar Chase's ability to catch 50-50 balls down the field, all that stuff. They're, they're differences. But if we're just going by the numbers, the Nico Collins group will tell you, when I had a, when he had a good quarterback, he was just as good. Yeah, but I, I just don't think that, like, other than Nico Collins and his agents, I don't think there's anyone walking on planet Earth that if you go, like, you know, Jamar Chase, Jordan Jefferson, uh, uh, who's the other? Oh, CeeDee Lamb. And Nico Collins. How do you order them? I think everyone has Nico Collins fourth. Cert- and they're yeah. probably like, why'd you even say Nico Collins? Why is he even on this list? <laughs> like, why are we even having this comparison? I'm just going to tell you, if I'm the, the people who are backing Nico Collins, none of those guys had to catch passes from Davis Mills and, and Case Keenum for most of his career until C- got, until C- CJ got here. Yeah. And, I, I, oh, I and, and what do you know? When I had a quarterback just like those other guys did in a, in a team who actually cared, I put up numbers. Yeah. Sounds like we should re-sign C.J. Stroud. <laughs> Sounds like that's the well, most important thing. Texas is like, shh, wait on that. The whole point is he's on a rookie deal, Sean. We don't want to sign him now. Don't give him ideas. I'm just saying, if every wide receiver looks good playing with a great quarterback, well. Shh. Don't give David Mulligan any ideas. A holdout in year two. Don't do it. Look at what the Mahomes just did. Huh? True. Mahomes is the the outlier here. Like, he can play play with anyone and go and, and go put up numbers. Uh, well, in the, in the playoffs, he wasn't great in the regular season. Some of that had to do with his wide receiver core. But when it came down to it, he got it done. But yeah, that's hey, not hey, Nick Casario can also just be like, I'll, just, I'll just draft the next one. What are you talking about? I drafted Tank Dell. I dra- did you draft Nico Collins? I, yeah, yes, he did. Yes, I can just draft the next one. What are you talking about? I can <laughs> find these find these guys in the third round. Okay. I mean, as long as you got CJ, you can play that. Well, you can play that game because you do have a great quarterback. But uh, so, but we found out what it's like in the regular season for a great quarterback when those when those guys are missing. Um, when we watched Kansas City, now is CJ pa- Patrick Mahomes? That's the question that that Nick that uh that Nick Casario has to deal with. Is I can play this. I'll just draft the next one. I don't have to pay any receivers. But is your quarterback Patrick Mahomes? 
We can find a Rasheed Rice. You don't want you don't want the Rasheed Rice from this offseason. Well, maybe the Texans <laughs> do. This is the new Texans, baby. That's a, well, I would say that's a little far, but I don't know what's a, what's they, too they, far anymore. They traded for Joe Mixon. I don't know what's too far. You're right. I don't know what's too, too far as far as off the field indiscretions for the Texans anymore. And and no, we will not have a which one's worse comparison. No, we we're will, not. We're, we're not interested. In we're that. not going to do that. Um, but the sta- the standard was some some guys had no chance of being Texans. Now I don't know where that standard is right now because they've proven to surprise us throughout this off season because they're but, trying to win games now. Oh, look at that. Maybe you maybe you acquire guys who have a little sink on them when you're trying to win football games. Sometimes that has to happen. But the Nico Collins thing is will be a discussion going forward. It just so happens that a young young excuse me, a young receiver gets a big deal, and that is Devontae Smith. The Eagles lock down uh their young receiver, which might mean the end for AJ Brown. Who knows? Uh, maybe they only want to pay one um for long term, but right now they're paying two receivers a lot of money and yeah, that usually means one of them has to go, and generally it's the older one. So maybe AJ Brown isn't long to long for the Eagles. Maybe after this year, we'll see about that going forward. We're done with hour one. We'll get into some more Astro stuff. We'll talk about the NBA as a whole. The playoffs aren't completely set, but we do have several matchups. But you know, the plan will determine a couple as well. So a lot to get get to an hour two. We'll be back. It's ex- extension day, apparently, in pro sports. Grayson Allen got four years, $70 million. Now, he signed a two-year, $17 million deal with the Suns. And the Suns are in a position where they have no wiggle rooms. So if they let a guy go, they couldn't. They It's not like they go sign a, a player of equal caliber. Now you have the mid-level exception and all this stuff, but they're against the second uh, em- envelope, I believe. So they're, the way they're going to spend money is very restricted going forward. So they can't let guys go. So Grayson Allen had a great year. 
shot over 40% from three. Actually, I think around 46% from three. He he was really good for them. And with the injuries they've had to deal with, he was certainly a guy who helped keep their heads above water. Now they're the sixth seed. They will see the Timberwolves in a series where the Wolves have not dealt with the Suns very well this year. They played yesterday. The Wolves had a chance to get the number one seed or even just the two seed, and they got their doors blown off. So they're going to see the Wolves in round one. I think a match, excuse me, they're going to see the Suns in round one. Uh, I think a matchup the Suns feel pretty good about. So despite the injuries to Bradley Beal and the, the age of Kevin Durant, and Devin Booker's been solid, but he's had his injury issues too. They probably feel like they're in a pretty good position to get into round two. Of course, they would have to see the the, the Nuggets, who no one wants to see, if the Nuggets advance, and that'll be determined by the plan. But four years, seventy million for Grayson Allen. Because of where the Suns are, I don't mind it for them. It's just a lot of money for your fourth guy, and and you have you are perimeter perimeter oriented, and. If you have your way, he is your fourth best perimeter player, and you're giving him that type of deal. But I, but what else are they going to do? They let him go. They're not going to get a guy of his level, but honestly, he's the fourth option when you're healthy, and your fourth option is getting that type of cash, and that's because of that new owner, owner syndrome. Matt Ishbia was like, I want that guy, I want that guy, I want that guy. What? Bradley Beal has a no trade? Doesn't matter. Bring him on. He's always injured. Doesn't win. Bring him. I want him. I want to make moves. And the moves led them to a six seed. Well and it means they're paying. Seed. They're out of the playing, buddy. That, it's true. Oh, that's an accomplishment for this Suns team. Beal, Durant, and Booker, we, we're out of the playing. That's an accomplishment. And barely, out, it took to the last day of the regular hey, season. We beat, we beat the three seed on game 82 to get out of the playing. No, I mean, you're right. I mean, the, the Suns. Uh, they better go on a run this year. Yeah, this man. year maybe next, and then, yeah. then it starts getting ugly uh, pretty fast. Especially when you, you know, you mentioned that Grayson Allen's their their fourth best player. Then the problem is that their three of their four best players are all six foot four, six foot five. And none of them are defensive stoppers. None of them are point guards. <laughs> they were they're, they're cast <laughs> into that role because they don't really have yeah, one. They have three shooting guards that that they're all they're they're paying now. And again, none of them you're you're you feel great about. You know, I mean, look at their series they have coming up with uh, Minnesota. Who's the guy that you want to throw on Anthony Edwards? Do you want Devin Booker chasing him around? Probably not. Probably Bradley Beal just out of hey, we don't need your we need Devin Booker's offense more. Yeah. So if he's tired, we're You're our innings eater here. Yeah, we need you it, we're all right if you're tired. Yeah. Make it up on the other end standing and standing on the the three point line. So that that's where the Suns you know, they they have a lot of talent, but it, it it's a part of like I I don't know if they fit really. Actually, no, I do know they fit really well. They don't. They, they don't. don't. We've seen well. it. They're they the sixth seed. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're one hamstring away from any of those guys. They've from, used all their picks and spent all their money to be the sixth seed. And then now, now, the deal overall is only 17. The average annual salary is only 17 and a half. So it's not, a, it's not crazy. It's just that when you're when you're having to vote that, that much money to, well, three legitimate guards and then a fourth perimeter player, Kevin Durant, and you're, and then obviously you're paying Nurkic and credit to him for staying healthy. He never does, but he did this year. So it just feels like a team that's well incomplete and not well built. And well, it's the reason they're the six seed. <laughs> so yeah, all all of this is like we're we're talking about it, and it's like actually we have seen this before. Like we're talking about this move as like how it all fits together. It's like no, we just saw how it fit together over 82 games. And it's like you mentioned, Nurkic stayed healthy, which is something he. Uh, doesn't do as often the last what since like 2020 yeah, the last couple of years yeah. yeah and you just had a career high shooting uh year from, from grayson, grayson allen. allen he shot 46 percent. he's a 40 about 40 percent uh three-point shooter for his career so he's a good shooter but you got the like absolute top of the line grayson allen year you got absolute top of the line nurkic year and where did that leave you six seed yes Nice matchup against the Timberwolves. They've obviously they beat them on Sunday, but they've handled are, them throughout. So it yeah. is. 
I saw a stat line that the Timberwolves are getting close to getting it under double digits in the fourth quarter, and it's the it'll have been the first time it was under double digits against the Suns all year in the fourth quarter of a game. So the Suns have yeah. dominated them um, throughout, and obviously the Suns went on to win by 19 points. Uh, so it's a good matchup for them, and, and the Suns are, hey, we're just going to shoot you out of the gym. That's what they're going to have to do, and they've been able to do that against the Timberwolves, who are a really good defense. We'll see if Rudy, the Rudy Gobert slander comes back where – we talk about how he gets played off the floor all the time, at least with the Jazz. Uh, now the Jazz had bad perimeter defenders and to put Rudy in bad positions, and he he can't really close out on guys. And now he's out of position to try to get back and defend the paint. We'll see if that we'll see if that continues. The Suns, they're a jump shooting team. They should, like to shoot a lot of mid range jumpers, and of course, Grayson Allen is one of their designated three point shooters. They have Eric Gordon around too, so. Um, it's a matchup where the offense of the, the Suns, they will just may shoot you out of the gym literally because they'll just keep knocking down jumpers and you won't have an answer. And the, and the Wolves' the offense gets a little clunky down the stretch. So you look at the scores. Now, these were stretched over the course really since November. They, they did play a couple of games in April. You mentioned We mentioned yesterday's game. Um, they also beat the Wolves by 10 in early April, and then they beat them by like 18 early in the season. That one doesn't really count. So... That's one of your more intriguing playoff matchups. You also have Mavs six Mavs uh, Clippers. The Clipper, the, this Clipper team who was great about six games after the James Harden trade because they were terrible initially, yeah. and then they got it together. Then they became very mid, and now they were able to finish well enough to, where they didn't have to play against any of their guys against the Rockets to have the four seed. No, that, Z- Xavier, I forgot what his last name was. Xavier Woods, was it? I forgot. He played 46 minutes, Sean. <laughs> that guy, who you can't even remember his last name, played 46 minutes. I remember Xavier, but I, I don't know. It might have been Woods. I'm not sure. Or maybe that's someone else. But the Clippers finished well enough where guys whose names we don't know played and played a lot against the Rockets, helped the Rockets get the 41. Moon. <laughs> All right, we did not remember his last name. <laughs> or the Rockets played well. Or the Rockets got the forty-one and forty-one. So we thank the Clippers for not trying. Appreciate that well, very thank much. Thank them for being so good in the first eighty-one games that they didn't have to they try. Could throw it in park. <laughs> yes, where they could, they're solidified as the four seed and decide. Hey, all these guys, you guys can play, and and Boban can miss free throws, and everyone laughs at it. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, everyone can live out their dreams yes. in, of either playing in an NBA game or getting free chicken. Everyone, everyone a, won. It's a big night in L.A. Everyone won, well, except for the Clippers as a whole. But, but you know, guys whose names we don't know got to play, play a lot. Maybe the most minutes will ever play in an NBA game. So I hope so for Xavier, Xavier well, Moon. Yeah, forty. unless he wants to go play for Tom Thibodeau. <laughs> then 46 might be on the low end at some point. Uh, did you see DiVincenzo played 51 minutes? It did go to overtime, Sean. That it had to have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, unless you're unless you're like the Lakers and the Grizzlies. Did you see that there was extra time played because yes. the the clock person messed it up? Yeah, uh, I think on well, uh, it had to been on Friday night. Yeah, uh, it, was about, it was about an extra minute and a half of game time they played because the clock person screwed it up. But yeah, the 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 Knicks secured the two seed because the Bucks. Yeah, now Giannis wasn't gonna play. He was hurt. He's hurt. He may not play to start the playoffs if we take what Shams Shams report at uh, face value. Shams is talking about there's some real questions about whether whether Giannis is gonna play in Game One against the uh, who are they play against the uh, the Pacers. Who the Pacers have actually played pretty well against the Bucks th- er, this year. So the Knicks win in overtime, and and. Tibbs plays all his guys all the minutes he can, so they win the two seed. But it's because the Bucks they go into Orlando, Orlando who had lost I think maybe three in a row at the time, and they were reeling. Dame Lillard, it's terrible. The Bucks are slow and old and unathletic. All bad things when it comes to playoff basketball. And the Magic are the younger, stronger, bigger team. And the Magic can't shoot, but they were able to muscle and defend against the Bucks. The Bucks got real problems because that's a team who is now under 500 with Doc Rivers since he since he became the coach. Yeah, I think 17 and 19. Yeah. I think. Adrian Griffin's like, "Okay, you you guys didn't like our defensive rotations. Now look at you. Now, now look. And so the Bucks, I think if we're talking about first round upset teams, I'm zero zeroing in on the Bucks. The Giannis being hurt thing, and also the fact that they didn't handle the Pacers very well all year long. And the Pacers will play with pace. They'll, they'll Another team will just try to outscore you. And the Bucks are going to be as bad defensively as they were against Orlando, a bad offensive team. 
uh, it's they're, they're going to have real problems, particularly if Giannis isn't around. So, uh, but I think my favorite matchup is Clippers Mavs. As far as star power and what that series could be, those series have been very competitive uh, between the two. So I like that one. Yeah, Clipper, Clippers Mavs is going to be going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be high level. The, and the for for the most part, you can only in the first round you can only ask for one of the two. Is it going to be really fun, or is it going to be high level? True, uh, <laughs> you can't really get get both sometimes and competitive. Uh, yeah, I, I think Pacers Bucks. It I mean that one to me just comes down to like, can Giannis play? If not, shows over Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it would be the second time in two years. It costs Bud his job, but Giannis gets hurt in game one. They should just hire back Bud. I saw a couple people Fire like Docker tweeting out moment. gifts of Bud. Um, the, this is the worst record the Bucks have had in like Probably since they hired. Him. Yeah, since they hired Bud, and people are like Bud's like apparently there's a gif of Bud giving a thumbs up, and that's what I saw a lot of. But quoting that tweet, Bud ju- Bud being yeah I know thank you, um, and of course is he their Dusty Baker? Are we gonna? Th- are the Bucks fans gonna thank him? They should thank him now. Yeah, after what they've had to yeah, go see through. See how bad it. Yeah, oh yeah, but you don't. You don't like. You know. You yeah. don't like the fact we lose in the first Sorry, round. Sorry, Jimmy two Butler years. was averaged over thirty-eight points per game, whatever the number was, and Giannis got hurt. Sorry, I couldn't predict that. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't predict playoff Jimmy and our best player getting hurt. They did blow multiple big leads in the fourth. In in the fourth in game four, yeah. game five, that might have been something. Bud could have done this. He could have done something to stop that. Listen, I'm I'm not saying Bud was the perfect coach. Yes, but just... when you compare him to Adrian Griffin, who was actually had a great record, but they just didn't like the process, and and Doc, whose process stinks and his record stinks, Bud might have not have been so bad. Might not have he, been so bad. He's definitely the best of the three coaches. Yes, <laughs> and he's won a title with you as well. So all the advantages go to Bud. The Bucks just have to hope. I don't know how, how much hope you can have in Doc Rivers changing things in the playoffs they better just hope Tyrese Halliburton looks as hampered as he has been because if that guy's healthy and Giannis is missing just wrap it up for the Bucks. It's a limp off that's what you're saying <laughs> whoever, Tyrese Halliburton limps most we, there the were most? times where Tyler, Tyrese Halliburton was playing 15 minutes a night to reach the 65 game threshold that's how banged up he's been just barely making the minutes number so he could make so he could be classified as playing 65 games that's the type of season he's had yes I wouldn't call it a limp off like you did, but the b- best players on each team, one probably won't play in game one. The other, if it was a less important game, probably would sit. But it's a playoff, so he'll play. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think I trust Giannis. Just maybe maybe I'm over emphasize or over remembering the the twenty twenty one playoffs. Yeah, when it looked like won. he was done for. Yeah, where his knee bent like the opposite direction he's supposed to bend, yeah. and he missed two games. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Giannis, the, even in Shams' tweet, he goes, despite Giannis's remarkable healing ability, so that is acknowledged. It's like he's Wolverine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> despite this, So that is acknowledged that Giannis has come back from injuries before, uh, but this one might be one that, that keeps him out. And it's a calf, and the calves, depending on how you treat it and how – how quickly you rush back can lead to other things. I think a lot of people have talked about what happened to KD in the in the in the finals, where he where he had a calf injury, came back, and then it turned into an Achilles. So obviously, with uh, Giannis as your franchise, you, you're trying to avoid that if you're the Bucks. Now you can't bet on Giannis and an injury happening, but you can bet on the series. And maybe if Giannis misses, or you think Giannis is going to miss a couple games. Maybe you're, you're feeling pretty good about the Pacers. You know where you put that bet on? <laughs> do I have that spot or is it just the Aquila? Okay, we'll do this here. We'll do a, we'll do the other spot later since I was on a roll and Sean got in my ear. You didn't hear it, but he got in my ear. Now I'm confused. But uh, we will talk about what Sean wants to talk about later. What we'll talk about now is where you can put money on or where you can put money on a game if you feel like the Pacers are going to win. That is mybookie.ag. Just go to the website, mybookie.ag. And you've got a chance to take advantage of an injury concern for one team or maybe you just think love the matchup. Who knows? But you can take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from that website. And if you sign up now, take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit. If it goes all the way up to $1,000, by the way, 
That's how generous they are. Put in 200, get 300 ready to play instantly using promo code BET975. The best part about MyBookie is you can take it any t- anywhere. You can bet on anything, anytime, and do it from anywhere. So from home, at work, or at a game. It doesn't have to be the game you're betting on. Maybe you're going to enjoy the, a certain baseball team in town, but you have an eye on the NBA playoffs. My bookie take care takes care of you there. Just use that promo code BET975 to secure your welcome bonus today only with my bookie. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, it's the Dell Olalea Show. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Now back to Dell Olalea. So, Justin Verlander pitched on Saturday for Corpus Christi. It didn't go well, if you look at the numbers, and there are differing opinions on how it actually went. If you just go by the number, six runs... Given up five earned and seven hits against the Frisco Rough Riders of the Texas Rangers organization. He struck out three, walked one, and threw 51 of 71 pitch, 77 pitches for strikes. Now, you, you hear that stat line. is like, oof, another rough outing. People who were there said the defense let him down, and uh, if not for bad defense, that would have been a, a much better stat line. Unfortunately, <laughs> the defense was bad, but he also – threw two wild pitches and had two pitch clock violations. So I'm not sure you, we can blame that on the defense. We wouldn't call it a sterling effort. We would just say the best part about those numbers are he was able to complete his, his start and do it pain-free and appears on track to be back with the Major League Club. Now, I have said before I prefer my former Cy Young winner to get outs on the minor league level. Minor league level, and he got some outs, just not – consistently enough to keep him from giving up a lot of runs. But if we're going to blame the double-A players, great. Anything to make us feel better about Verlander coming back. But we'll take it. We'll take anything than the combination of Brown and and at least J.P. France over the weekend. Uh, the Brown stuff, I don't know if that's going to change. We'll have Arrogetti tonight, and then we'll have Brown, and then we'll have, then we'll have France. Not exactly a... Th- uh, a trio that makes me feel like this Braves series is going to go well. Who do you have the most faith in out of those three pitchers? I've seen a... France recently be okay. okay. So I'm going to chalk up Friday night to just a bad night. He 
He's he's coming back from. You're allowed to have a bad night. Yeah, he's coming back from paternity leave, right? He missed his previous start due to the birth of a child. Yes. yes. He didn't miss a start somewhere. Was it his? Pre- I don't know if it's previous start. I think it was, but he was back and he did, he pitched poorly. And I'm going to be like, you know what? New dad. New dad stuff. Although depending on which sport you play, in, apparently a new dad makes you a great player. Um, and sometimes it doesn't. Double edged sword. Yeah. Who? You never know. It's all. It's dependent on the person. So, but he's back. I'm going to chalk that up to a bad night, a bad Friday night. We all we all have had a bad Friday night. Yeah, Friday night. You wish you could take back. Yeah, this was that's his. His was just televised. It's yeah. mid. Yeah, for, unfortunately, <laughs> thankfully for us, most of our Friday nights aren't televised, or we would be in trouble. But this is a midweek start. He'll be okay, and the Braves are in town. Well, which makes me feel like he'll be less okay. But <laughs> but it will be better than what we saw on Friday, and and. And the line we're looking for, j- just be above keeping my team in the game. Be there, and I'll be okay with your starts. That's what I'm hoping for for the guys who aren't of the Javier, Blanco, or eventually Verlander. How would you feel about four innings pitched, five earned runs? That's a lot. But have the Astros scored three runs through four innings? I don't know. I said he's I, got. If I they're not, I can't. I can't. If they're can't not in the God game, here. I don't like it. If they're not in the game, if it's five nothing, no, I don't like it. Okay, that I guess that's what I'm asking. With this Astros offense, because this Astros offense is is hit or uh, miss, is potent sometimes, and then other times absent. Well, you know, well, what does well you know mean? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes they're great, like they were over the course of the they, last two nights. They're the number one offense in baseball. Yes, but there are sometimes where they'll get twelve hits and leave. 12 guys but, stranded. But, or, yes, but in those games, if— Or eight if, guys stranded, if, whatever the number is. Uh, J.P. France went eight innings, two earned runs. They also would have lost. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I understand. Is, is that with five five runs, you can at least still go, well, But I do think can. there's same thing. I do think there's something to game pressure and momentum. And if it's two, nothing, you always still feel like you have a shot to win. And who knows? But if you're down, if you're down five to nothing through four— it kind of sucks the life out of everybody sometimes. Now, it doesn't always lead to a blowout, but it has kind of this year. where They, they, they got the actual... up off the mat uh, on Friday against the Rangers. They're down like 12-2. to two, Yes. Made it respectable. They scored I don't, eight runs. Who's looking for respectable? They're not, they're not, they're not Middle Tennessee versus Ohio they State. Cover the spread. Who cares if it's respectable? This isn't college football. They covered the first half. What are you No, are you that's not about? a thing. <laughs> Not in this sport. So they made them play their starters. The entire- they, <laughs> yes, they they force Ohio State. They force the Rangers and tired them out for Saturday and Sunday. You're right. Middle Tennessee. That's Middle Tennessee State might do that to some team, too. You're right. And maybe an injury happens uh, just to affect the course of a season. Yes, they made the Rangers play their starters. Is that what we're leaning into? Uh, no. Hey, no walk ons got in. <laughs> But but you are supposed to beat them at home. Yeah, no walk-ons got it. Yeah, um, sure. But if we're going back to your original question, if it's five, what did you say? Five runs four, over four innings. Yes. And you and the if that's it, I don't know anything about the score. Yeah. No, that's not that's not good enough. Okay. That's not good enough. I, I would a run per inning, four okay. over four. I'll take that. Now I'm just imagining a six innings, six runs. <laughs> he would never. Well, hopefully yeah, that he would, would never happen. He would never get to that point Be- because he would have to have. It would have to be like three runs going into the sixth. Yeah, and then he and then the, the first blow batter up. that get, oh the first batter that gets on base they would yank him. Yeah, like they would just. Ne- yeah, he never would never. He would out. never get to that point. He doesn't have the trust. No, does hasn't earned it. So right four. So four over four for all the starters, I'd be okay with this. Okay, week. that's like the blanket in the series. expectation. Yes, if they get to that, I feel like the Astros have a shot to win two out of three, if their starters are at that level. Okay, I'm not asking for much. That really, I I'm mean, asking to keep the team in the game, so they feel like they've got a shot over the back half of the game. That's all. And and hopefully they scored a couple of runs, I'm so not, it's not for nothing. I'm not used to this as an Astros fan. I'll well, tell you. I'm not used to having an entire. World Series rotation out either. Yeah. Just just to go into series being like, ugh. <laughs> Hope you can sneak one out of out of uh out of Minibate, out of your home stadium. You hope that you can you know, steal one against 
against the Braves. It's just the pessimistic view coming into the six game stretch looking was forward to the day off. <laughs> Some people are like, hey, if we go if we get two out of six here, that's cool. At least we don't get completely dominated. Now they're already ahead of schedule. They won two out of three. If you win if you go five hundred in the six game stretch, I'm like, great. Considering who's pitching against the Braves, I'll take it. Again, that's a, that's another thing. I'm not used to, to, to eh, just got to go 500 over these six game the six game stretch. The the guy who said the Astros were, were going to have their best team in history said if they go 10 and 10 over the first 20, I'm cool. That's what Granado said. That's how nervous he was about this, and that was before all the injuries happened. So if they can get now, they're not going to do that. Uh, no, they've already lost 11. Impossible. Yeah. But if they if they finish Rangers Braves three and three, okay, and if. And if they get to four and two, a great bounce back from getting their doors blown off by the Royals. Yeah. Wow. We really are staring down like a seven and 13. Probably, probably what I would put it at. Maybe, maybe six and 14. That's tough. Six. Oof. That, that is a tough record. And as I, I said it in the first hour, thankfully the AOS isn't good right now. So even at five games under 500. The, and, the league leader, the division leader, has eight wins. And like I said, I, I again, d- a disgusting point of Astros fandom. I am looking at where they have days off to where I'm like, well, at least the bullpen will get a nice rest. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, Thursday schedules, you know, <laughs> your schedule's free. Seth Martinez, do whatever you want. Relax, Just man. Don't throw a base. We're gonna need you. <laughs> Just, Just don't throw. It's like, yeah, it's like when you're swamped at work, or like you have a whole bunch of. Uh, projects do in school and then you're like well but then you know then i have spring break <laughs> like it's just like that's right the astro seasons become <laughs> they have midterms this this is the last three the, days of midterms it's all <laughs> then, yeah it's all midterms that are all kicking in you, at least you hope you hope yeah and they're like you know what the next weekend it's it's uh we have thanksgiving coming up i'll go back home get some free meals I like how we're planning this astro season around days off like <laughs> that's what we have to do. They also, weirdly enough, have a day off after. So they have they play the Braves, then they have a day off, then they play Friday, Saturday, Sunday in D.C. against the Nationals. Then they have Monday off, and then they play the Cubs, and then they have another day off when they go to. The I want to get to the point where this <laughs> Astro team is so, so excited about. <laughs> we're so excited about them. We don't want them to have days off. Like you know, oh, this day off is actually going to hurt the team because they're playing so well. Yeah. I want to get to that point. We're not at that point yet. Yeah, not even close. I mean, again. Against the upcoming schedule, because they have a game off basically after every series. Now, one of them is because they have to go to Mexico City, which I guess actually isn't that far. I don't know why they need the day off for that. but Customs? Actually, there are no customs going that way. It's, it's coming back, <laughs> really, that you have to deal with stuff. I don't know. What, it's, yeah. You can go in. It's pretty easy to go in you one way. J.P. France is going to have trouble getting, <laughs> getting in? Uh, unlikely. Feels unlikely. It's, it's, it's usually when it comes to that stuff. The other way. Although, depending on who, you, what national news show you listen yeah. listen to or they watch, just walk on in. Yeah, yeah. According to some, um, that's what that's what I keep hearing. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can we'll get to the point where no days off because it means the momentum has slowed as opposed to let's get a day off to get the bullpen rest. Yeah, please, please. Thanks, Brandon Belak needs this day off. Can't believe he's pitched as much as he has. He's thrown a lot of pitches. That's that's he has to be like, wow, the team really does not value me <laughs> deep down. He has to he has to realize, wow, the reason I'm pitching so much. It, it, part of it is that the starters have stunk it up. Yep. The other part is like the Astros are looking at who's like, who do we not care has a crazy pitch count? <laughs> be like, start warming up. The Astros aren't like Augie Garrido and Wayne Graham. Just go out there and throw as many, whatever. If your arm falls off, your arm well, falls no, off. They're, they're not like that. They are like that with Brandon Belak. <laughs> Which, true. if I was Brandon Belak, I'd feel some type of way about it. You know, Chandler Rome brought up the point of the Astros, you know, they gave a lot of money to Josh Hader, but didn't find a way to replace all the other bullpen arms. And Belak's taking the brunt of it right now. He's like, Sorry, we didn't really do a lot to help middle relief, so you're going to have to deal with this. You're going you're gonna to have to be our Phil Maton and Hector Neras. Yeah, go hey, go out there, buddy. You complain to us about not getting enough opportunities. Now you're going to get all of them in my hypothetical. <laughs> Smoking the whole pack of cigarettes right here. Yeah. Get out there. You wanted it. Now it's your turn. So what that we're down 7-0? to zero? Go out there. Perform. <laughs> Tape don't lie. Put some good swim <laughs> out there, Belak. Yeah, yeah. 
this is for your next team. <laughs> yeah, I love the. I always love that conversation. Hey, they're not going to make this roster, uh, but it, it, you know, it could be for their next team. Well, I've seen this roster. The roster's not great. Yeah. If he can't make it on this roster, what makes you think he's yeah. going to make it on that one? <laughs> I mean, normally because normally it's a preseason thing in football. It's like, well, his next roster might be the San Antonio Brahmas yeah. of the UFL. Yeah, he might be. He might be a renegade or a roughneck. You never know. I'm not calling him that, Art. I mean, you have a nickname for JP France, and it's funny, but I'm not going to call him that because now it's out of context. Yes, he's got that tattoo on his arm. I know, um, but I'm not going to call him what you want me to call him. I'm not your puppet. We got a couple more segments to go here. We finally have an answer to the secret transfer that the Cougars were going to get, and people were keeping secret. They didn't want to tell Sean. Sean thought he had a source, but his source said no. We're going to wait, and that announcement was, was made over the weekend, so we know who the Cougs' prob- probable starting backcourt will be. We'll talk about that when we come back. We'll get s- to some other things as well. The Dell Olalea Show continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's your host, Dell Olalea. So the Cougs have a point guard. Jamal Shedd declared for the draft, and with four out of the five stop starters returning, this Cougs team was expected to be good. And now they have an addition who they expect to start at point guard. Milos Uzan is the addition through the transfer portal. He comes from Oklahoma. 
So while he leaves, while at least the program leaves to go to the SEC, he will remain in the Big 12. And he was he started like 56 games. So he started a lot in two years. He was a freshman All-American, four-star recruit. So you know he's a talented player, um, particularly because of how well he played as a freshman. The sophomore numbers took a dip. More usage, more opportunities. The, the efficiency went down. And maybe could put a lot of that on the fact that Oklahoma fell apart. That was a team that was ranked in the top 20 early in the year, got off to a good start, and the Big 12 was not kind to them uh, as, they fell, as they fell apart throughout the Big 12 schedule. So Milos Uzan is your new guard for the Cougs, probably your starting point guard. He fits the profile of Cougs guards, at least when it comes to shooting the basketball, because he doesn't do a good job of it. At least he didn't last year. He was good. As a freshman, oh, the percentages sorry. were good as a freshman. Last uncalled year, not 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 good. What? That was uncalled for. What? Uh, it's not uncalled for. He fits in. He does fit in. He's going to play defense and not shoot. Well, apparently, he's attack the rim and with the ball. Yes, with the ball. <laughs> it's, it's like by throwing the ball at the rim. <laughs> oh, so you mean attack. you you mean abuse the rim is what like you're a saying? Slingshot. Yeah. <laughs> he will fire the basketball at the rim. I just and, hope they're enforced. And know. whatever happens, happens. Yeah, this kid played well his freshman year. And as I said, he was a better shooter on lower opportunities as a freshman. Whatever happened between the, his freshman and sophomore year, maybe maybe, maybe he couldn't handle the volume. He was put in different spots as opposed to being a, a bit contributor a little bit as a freshman as opposed to being a, a main guy as a sophomore. It changed. So the Cougs are going to hope – hopefully he finds the shooting touch he – at as a freshman, how, but, how does he play defense? You know, of course, that's always the point. What's, what's the I, don't he, I don't think he. I don't think he. I don't think he'd be here if he couldn't play defense. That's just part of the the equation. You don't you don't become a Cougar in this version of Kelvin Sampson's program if you can't play defense. I mean, unless you're a walk on, oh. and they like you. And you I was gonna you, say Ryan Elvin. Well, he's a walk on. That, that doesn't count. Locking people up. Uh, was he? <laughs> what What's your evidence of that, Sean? He's on the U of H Cougs. As as a walk he on, he closed out. He closed it out. Their uh, yes, second round win. after like four perimeter players fouled out. He did help close out the game. You're right in that regard. And by closing out, they had him shoot a couple free throws and pull him off the floor, so he didn't have to be on the defensive <laughs> end. Yes, he closed out the game. Yeah, no, uh, I this is a because didn't didn't Kelvin Sampson also say that they he like alluded to it in one of the post uh postseason you know after they lost their you know uh exit interview type deal uh with like yeah you know we feel pretty good about we're gonna have a lot of guys come back and we feel pretty good about someone we have in the portal and to like basically drop a teaser for huh gonna make a portal move and then for it to be a guy who averaged seven points a game last year Mm, yeah, that does seem. I I'm just saying, is this the move? Is are, are we done, or is there is there going to be a starting point guard that plays over this guy? I I just don't know. He started at point guard last year, Oklahoma. I don't think he transferred to transfers to Houston if he's not going to start. Now competition, say all the coach cap, yeah, I mean, all the one, coach cliches team, you want. One team missed the missed the tournament, and the one, was, one the was the number one seed. seed. Understood, but I don't think this player leaves and, and comes to a spot where he's not the starter. Now, he could be outplayed, but I think there's an opening to be the starting point guard, and I think that's what they told him. Hey, come in, and you can, you can clearly win this job. Whether he does it or not, that'll be determined by practice and obviously whoever who, their recruiting class. And I don't know if they're going to bring in another transfer point guard to compete with him. I think it'll be something where if there's a p- player on the roster who plays better than him right now, then then maybe he doesn't get that job. But the expectation is he'll be your starting point guard. It's just, it's not even a question about Milos Uzan. He, he started for a Big 12 program, understood. Now an SEC program, understood why why he, why he you go grab him, you, you bring him over in the transition you think should be pretty seamless as far as competition level, played the same competition. The th- my thing is, your source of all people, who wouldn't, who wouldn't give you a name, but pretty much hinted at this was going to be giant. And I'm like... He didn't hint that it'd be giant. What did he say then? He said that he knew... 
who and, it was, and he yeah, couldn't tell you. And the, and that he or she could not tell me. Because he was afraid you'd run to the air and, and mention know. it? I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was just messing with me. Maybe, Or maybe he knew it was Milos Uzan and was uh, was like, you know what, I'll just, I'll just keep him in the dark on this. <laughs> there was a lot of uh, talk, uh, particularly on Twitter, before Milos Uzan was made official, that the Cougs were in on a big-time point guard. And he did, I guess we go back to, he did start in the Big 12. Do you think he beats out Mercy Miller for uh, he, the starting job? Just judging by how these things normally go, yes. I think he will be your starting point guard, no matter what guy you name, unless you name a guy where they bring in another transfer. Ronnie James. <laughs> Ronnie James isn't a point guard. <laughs> So, yes, I would think he would beat out Bronny James. Do you think LJ Cryer can beat out Bronny James? Is LeBron running the team? <laughs> we don't know. I think LJ Cryer would beat out Bronny James in, in, on on a lot of teams, but not every team, depending depends on what that team needs. Uh, the Lakers? Maybe not. Or the or whoever the G League affiliate is for the Lakers. Uh, uh. I'm just trying to give examples of places where Bronny James would win the job. That's all. Not that LJ Cryer is going to be a G League player. We're just trying to find spots where Bronny the James. The battle would, for the 15th man on the Lakers. Trying, you find think? a spot where Bronny would win the job. Where he would be the, the Nassus. Where no one takes his his spot. No matter what happens. The Lakers. The G League Lakers. And I can't really think of another team where LJ Cryer wouldn't be the favorite. At least in my eyes to win that job. If they're competing against each other. Yeah. No. I. I it is. It is an... Uh, at least, at least the Cougs brought back four of their five starters. Because if if it was a different situation where they had this this uh, point guard target in the transfer portal, we're waiting to see who it was, and they also weren't bringing back m- the most vast majority of their mm-hmm. team last year, and then it's Milos Uzan, who again started a lot for a team that missed the tournament, but. And also didn't average that many points for a team that missed the tournament. He was a freshman All American two All-American. seasons ago. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, or freshman Big Twelve. Excuse me. Yeah, freshman Big Twelve. All Not American. all. Yeah, freshman. Yeah. Uh, can you be an All American if it's just oh, a Big Twelve? Oh, I guess it's all Big Twelve. All Big Twelve freshman team. Yes. Whatever. I don't. I don't think we'd be like, ah, this was the move that they had all along. It's. It's. It's almost like a team at the trade deadline when they. When they make promises that they're going to be aggressive with getting someone in the bullpen. And they add a middle reliever. Yeah. We're going to be aggress- aggressively in the pitching market. And, yes, they. it's like, welcome welcome to town, Phil Maton, who I would kill for Phil Maton right now. Yeah, let's not besmirch the great name of Phil Maton. But I'm saying that as Astros fans, we became accustomed to trading for Justin Verlander and Zach Greinke at the, at the trade deadline. And then getting a reliever was, you know. Step down. Yes. Now, Milos, or Milos, excuse me, Milos Uzan, could prove me and Sean's skepticism very wrong. And it's less about the player. It's, it's, for me, it's more about the, the excitement surrounding this particular player. When you would probably say, or at least right now, the four guys coming back are better players than him. I have higher expectations for the four guys. Yes, I think he will be... He they needed a point guard and they went and got one. That's that's the extent of my hype for this. They got a qualified starting point guard in the portal, and this is where I'll sit with with this particular edition. So they have a really good starting and five. You gotta feel you know maybe maybe he's gonna be playing for a better coach, and so you can you can say that he he his development is under better uh, better watch, better stewardship with Kelvin Sampson versus. Uh, it's not Long Porter Parker anymore. It's Porter. Por- oh yeah, Porter Mosier. Porter Porter Mosier. Yes, we're taking a shot at Porter Mosier for no reason. I just. I, oh, I'm sorry. Is he a better coach than Kelvin Sampson? You could say that about about 310 Division One coaches when we're talking. We're having yeah. that comparison. Oh, he's going to be coached by a better guy. All right. Every how many guys wouldn't be being coached by a better coach if they transferred and came to the U of H? We got. Mosier? Houston has one of the best coaches in the country, um, so I guess maybe not a shot at Porter Mosier, but, it's, little, but it sounded little, like it, it sounded like it. I mean, realistically, not a real shot, but you wanted it to be a shot. I mean, I could I could make it a shot and be like, uh, out of the three hundred, 